Good Wednesday morning to you, Night Avenue Christian Church. It's my privilege to bring to you the words of encouragement today. And I just want to encourage you to be faithful to the Word of God because it's going to be the strength for your life. I want to ask you a question before we get into this. I want to ask you, what do you dream about? What occupies your dreams? You know, we all have those kind of weird, bizarre dreams. I had a weird one the other day. Jay Leno was in it. Why was Jay Leno in it? I don't know. But you know what I did? I called him out. Why? Because Jay Leno is a gray-haired guy like me, and he had darkness in his hair, coloring it some way. So I called him out and said, what's up with that? Come on, stay true to the gray. So that's those are weird, bizarre dreams. But what are we dreaming about that's real? Um, you know, I think sometimes we're dreaming about the days where there's no restrictions due to this pandemic. You know, for me, sometimes at lunch, times I'll put on a video of people backpacking just so I can get out of doors because I just need to get a break. But we've also got bigger dreams than that, don't we? Hanging out with friends. Um, I got dreams of my son's graduation. He's gonna be graduating in a couple weeks. What's that gonna look like? You know, I don't know what it's gonna look like. It may be virtual, it may be by himself, it may be in a room where we don't get to be. It's, we're dreaming about it. It's something we're thinking about. You know, I know people in my group, when we do our life group, some people are saying, I just want to give you a hug. I just, we're dreaming about touching people that we care about, we encourage them, give them a hug, just saying we love you, because uh, it's not just virtual love. But I want to encourage you from some things that I read in my own personal quiet times that, um, today, about King Solomon and what he dreamt about. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings chapter 3, and we're going to read 3-14 through 14 about what King Solomon dreamt about, and I think it's applicable for us today. So 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 through 14. So Solomon loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father David, except that Solomon too, except that Solomon too offered sacrifices and burned incense at local places of worship called the high places. The most important of these places of worship was at Gibeon. So the king went there and sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings. That night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, God and God said, What do you want? To, what do you want? Ask and I'll give it to you. Solomon replied, You showed faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued your faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Now, O Lord my God, you have made me king instead of my father David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. Here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous, they cannot be counted. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern these great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, Because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for long life or wealth or death of your enemies, I will give you what you have asked for. I will give you, wise, give you a wise and understanding heart so that no one else... Um, such as no one else has had or ever will have. And I will give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my decrees, and my commands as your father, David did, I will give you a long life. What are you dreaming about? Solomon had a dream and God gave him an opportunity to ask. And in his dream, Solomon asked for wisdom. Now, you and I aren't gonna govern a nation. We are just trying to manage your own household, and that's hard enough. So do you dream about God's wisdom invading your life so that you can manage your household, so that you can manage your future, manage your job? You know, we're facing things that we don't know about, you know, health, social distancing, negotiating all these changes. I mean, we just heard about another change um, about what's going on with stay-at-home orders. Things are changing all the time. In these times of change, we need wisdom, don't we? So instead of dreaming about backpacking like I kind of like to do sometimes, maybe I need to be in seeking God in my dreams for his wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is, you know, usually we think of smart people when we think of wise people. But really, wisdom is not just being smart. Wisdom is intelligence plus humility. And isn't that what Solomon had? He said, God, I need help. I'm like a little child. And I don't think Solomon was a little child at that point. But he said, I need help. And so you and I, we're looking during this pandemic and we need help, don't we? 
We need wisdom on what to do. Maybe you've been cut back in your finances or there's somebody in your life group who needs um, some help because they lost their job and how does your life group rally around them? I'm asking for wisdom on certain things around here at this church. We all need to have this kind of wisdom and we need to seek it. And so my challenge to you is dream about God's desires for you. Dream about God's desires to understand and execute justice and righteousness and holiness, to understand the difference between right and wrong. We all know this passage and I know it's been referred to many times um, so far in our pandemic um, situation here in James chapter one. It says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God in verse five, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. And do not waver for a person with a divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. When we ask God for wisdom and he gives us guidance to his word, through the counsel of others, and through the Holy Spirit, hey, let's not be wishy-washy. Let's not be flip or flop people like the waves. Let's be focused and steadfast. You know, the, the fear of the Lord in Proverbs 1 is the beginning of wisdom. So that goes back to the humility, isn't it? So if you want God's wisdom in your life, a where to go, what steps to take, how to negotiate all these changes. If we need to be like Solomon saying, this is too big for me. I'm not sure what to do. God, please help me. First thing we need to do is have humility, have the fear of the Lord, and then we need to ask. And when we ask, we need to be true to God's word, and be strong in it, saying, God, you're gonna give me leading. You're gonna give me wisdom and I'm gonna hold on to that. I'm not gonna be wishy-washy. I'm not gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna be able to stay strong to you. Now, Wednesdays here at Knott Avenue are Provision Wednesdays. We're praying for people with their jobs. We're praying for food. We're praying for shelter. We're praying for resources. But I also wanna encourage you that in Provision Wednesday that we pray for wisdom, that we uh, know how to take the steps we have in front of us. I'm gonna ask you to pray for me. I am asking for wisdom on how we, as Not Avenue, can reach um, safely, reach our neighborhood in, in, a, in a pantry outreach. I've explored a couple different options, but I'm not 100% sure. You know, we're not big as Second Harvest at the Honda Center, but I've checked out some other churches, and we would like to reach our neighborhood and make a difference to the pantry outreach, but I need wisdom, and so I'm asking for that. So would you pray for that for me, please? We're asking how to support some of our missionaries. I've got missionaries from around the world saying, Mike, we need help. And so your giving to the Lord in worship is um, something I steward with a humble heart in saying we want to help these missionaries around the world. So would you pray for wisdom? I had one missionary said, I want to make an impact and people are, are, are starving. So can you help us? And I want to help that. We're praying as a church about when we might meet again. What's that going to take? What's going to look like? We're ordering sanitizing um, materials and solutions and stuff like that now so that when it comes back, we will be able to come back with safety, with wisdom, but we need that. We need that kind of wisdom right now. So would you pray for those things for me and, uh, and for our staff? Are you dreaming about God's holy wisdom leading your life? I wanna encourage you today to be like Solomon. Have reverence for the Lord. Have humility before the Lord. Say, God, give me wisdom in the steps that I should go. May God bless you as you seek him and seek his wisdom.